Hi and welcome to another exciting episode of Zen Moments. And today I have with me someone that is extraordinary and his work speaks volume. I mean, extraordinary hyperrealist. I have with me Ken. What's what you good, brother? Fantastic, good, brother? fantastic. It's been a I'm long time coming. Here. I'm happy to be here, man. I'm fantastic. Here. So good to have you here. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is, uh... Finally, I mean, it's been, <laughs> we've been planning this for quite a bit. Yeah. Quite some time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm happy that everything finally aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. I like what you're wearing. Oh, <laughs> ah, yes. You want to hire me? It's so good to have you here. I can tell you, uh, there are few people I look up to in the art world, and uh, I mean, you are one of them. Oh, I mean, bless, by by yeah. by a long, by a very high standard. Yeah. Uh, your work speaks for itself, Thank and you. if you don't know Ken, please <laughs> just Google Ken Wadiogo now. And, I mean, he's an amazing artist, hyper realist. Uh, yeah. I'll just allow you to do the rest of the introduction. Just tell us a little bit about you and uh, what you do. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a Nigerian visual artist. Mm. Um, I like to regard myself as a multidisciplinary artist. Absolutely, absolutely. I like working with different mediums, mm. like very mm. rare mediums. Mm. I love collaborations. Mm. It bets me into different, you know, spaces and different absolutely. ideas. Mm. So I started up art a long time ago, probably maybe ten years ago. I was not like, I was not like everybody that used to draw when they are children or they were, when mm -hmm. they were kids. I used to draw, actually. Uh, are you serious? I used to draw. I, I, as a matter of fact, I sports the, my parents' wedding album because <laughs> I, I drew it all over the wedding album. <laughs> you see, all, all, all yeah. my school brochures mm -hmm. were brochures. I, like my university ones, I used to like design people's faces in the, Interesting. In the brochure. Yeah. Interesting. But that was when I started you know, getting interested in art. In art. Fantastic. The, previously, I, my brother used to be the artist. My mm. brother used to draw a lot at home. Mm. So mm. He would draw, go to school. When we were, when we were little, and he would sell it. Wow. So I saw it and I was like, ah, this guy. He's ah, making money. I'm making money. I'm right? <laughs> <laughs> making money. The last I could do too. Yeah. So I used to I drew cartoons sometimes, but mm. you know to you know to catch. Mm. So I, mm. I, I left drawing. I started mm. trying to like play guitar. Yeah. You know, became mad as I get chess, you know, did mm. different things. Mm. Until mm. in my university, mm. I'm studying for uh, I, I, I started I entered as a civil engineer. Yeah. So I'm studying for art uh, for my school course and then you know i stumbled upon art and basically that just drove me into the art interesting. world interesting and you know it's been it's been a whole process it's been a whole experience 10 years you say yeah 10 years that means it's 2012 yeah 2012 because i started yeah. photography also in 2012 actually. are you serious absolutely so it's ah, 10 years I think that's, that's, <laughs> yes exactly so that's why i said i'm doing some yeah. projects this year oh, project beautiful. x is one of those oh, 10 years 10 commemorating years. 10 years uh of just uh, active still, practice. I'll still design. Yeah. <laughs> we can actually collaborate on it. I mean, so that's, that's, that's the whole idea. Um, you, collaborations are, yeah. I mean, from what you said, I've picked quite a yeah. bit yeah. already. Um, a lot of people go into things because of different things. Yeah. I know a little bit of a backstory. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you about it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about it because you did tell me how you really, really, really got back into art. So you're going to tell us yeah. that story. Yeah. Just make it short. Yeah. Tell yeah. us that story. Okay, so um, at first I used to, I, I was on Facebook one time and, you know, I liked this girl on facebook hmm. yeah and i saw her interest she liked you know guitar um, she loved her music she likes music art sports so at first i started trying to play music like guitars and stuff oh, yeah no yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i think i messed i made a fool out of myself <laughs> because when i we talk we talk a lot of time when i play the music she's like oh but me <laughs> and then i listen to the voice note again i'm like no 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 catch like that <laughs> so i thought you know, I should probably be able to draw. Do you understand? Mm. So I, I sketched one or two drawings of her. Mm. Then I, I didn't like it. So I, no, no. Okay, before then, that was when I entered into school. Mm. Then I was, I was in school. I was reading for, I was studying for engineering, and I came across this. My friend called me and said, "Yo, this this guy joined the Dean of Unilag," mm. and I was excited. I was like, "What? Joined Dean of Unilag?" Like, is it like cartoon drawing or he said no like it looks like he did i said it's a lie so i left everything i was doing and i went to this guy's um, place and he was like is it he was, he was in a table in the architecture department mm. and he was like big paper like this and he, 
the realism was on point. And mm. I was like, no way, oh, yeah. man. And my, the interest immediately reminded me of this girl that liked art. And I was like, you know what? This is a very good way to like reach out to her, to like draw her and see how I can. Man. So I started asking some <laughs> questions like, so I started asking some questions like, ah, where did you learn from? This is a, you told me to check something called hyperrealism on Google. So I went to Google, checked hyperrealism, and I saw like a whole bunch of artists. And I saw two artists that came to, that hit, hit me, J.D. Huberry and Kevin Okafo. Mm. And I started looking at their works. Mm. And because, wh why it hit me is because they had like pictures of the progress so mm. the picture, bro, yeah. bro, it was insane. The picture, mm. you see stage two is a sketch. Mm. Stage three, bam, the skin has come out. Like, yeah. how? we to hear. how? <laughs> so, so I just, you know, got interested in, in it. The, mm. I drew the girl almost like, I think almost, if not 20, 30 times. Yeah, man. I drew the, just trying to get the realism on point. Did the final work, gave it... We went to her, see, ah, see this work. She said, oh, it's nice. Wow. I, uh, nothing, it's just nice. <laughs> no hug, no kiss, nothing. Oh, my God. I said, okay, that, okay, I'm leaving you know, that. Okay. Uh, can I ask you out? <laughs> I said, can I ask you out? She said, ah, no, that, that, that's not how she sees me. Oh, my God. I carried the world back. Brother <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, you see, the, the fun part of it is that because I drew her 20, 30 times, I couldn't stop seeing the next stage, stage. of it. So I started asking my colleagues. So even with oh, the disappointment. Yeah. Mm. So I started joining people's girlfriends at the point. I drew people's girlfriends. Hoping that one of them. Just to learn. And because to them, they send it to the girl and say happy birthday. And it's a drawing. And she's like, oh, she's a DP. But they, she, they never, she never gets the. Hard copy. hard copy so the the the, the excitement to just see your, your soft copy mm. you know recreation of you mm. and you use it everywhere and, mm. and my guys my guys it's, it's, yeah. it's not the same but you know the 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 excitement got me mm. and i was like oh i, need, I can, I can keep this. doing this i can keep doing this oh wow i can actually give people the actual work mm. i can sell these works mm. i can yeah Basically, that's how it Interesting. Open. So that's, that's why I asked about the backstory. Because <laughs> you just paraphrase over it. Yeah. And, and just give us the real thing. Anyways, um, it's, it's exciting to learn from your story yeah. and how even some sort of like disappointment yeah. as, I mean, you're yeah. who you are today. Yeah. I mean, you're exhibiting yeah. all over the yeah. world. I mean, dream projects yeah. and residencies all over the world. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, Tell us some of the key projects and exhibitions you've, yeah. you've worked on, yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, I think it started with um, Insanity in 2016. Mm. So I used to draw a lot of client works. I used to draw people, their wives, ah, draw my wife, mm. I bet they... And I'll spend so much time drawing this person's wife. And it has to look exactly like the picture. But I hated that aspect. I wanted to do something else, you know, mm. something away from just trying to draw people. From, from representing direct representation. direct representation. Direct representation. I wanted mm. to do something that also added to my interest in art. Mm. So the first show we did was Insanity. And I started this work where I had this work where I just drew eyes. Mm. And at that time, I didn't know why I was drawing eyes. But when you look at, when you go back in my life, you realize that it was eyes was almost one of my most insecurity it was my main mm. insecurity because mm. i almost lost an eye oh. so when they treated it that mm. eye this eye was like quite big mm. so mm. It, it didn't make girls like really like me like that like that mm. <laughs> so I, it, it probably why that girl said no or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. yeah so eyes has always been like a very big conversation Part of yeah, yeah so it was through that work the, through that exhibition, I started doing works, you know, concerning like directed to eyes. So I did the first one, which is um, Insanity, mm. and you know that birth, you know, more exhibitions, um, mm. uh, local exhibitions, local exhibitions. But yeah. then I was like, I, I thought about it, and now I, I, you know, I was, I was like, before I got this local exhibition, you know, mm. it took a lot of effort for me. Somebody had to believe in me. Mm. But every time I post, I put this work online. It's like the whole world. Like, whoa, goes really, 
excited, gets really excited and mm. I'm like, I should not restrict my, you know, where I show my work yeah. you know, to you know, local. To just can, a local. Yeah, yeah. I can show it internationally. So mm. there's this gallery that used to follow me at that time, Creative mm. Debuts. Mm. And, you know, I sent them an email and I, was, I sent them a, a DM and I was like, you know, I have a series of work that can be in one of your shows. Sure, they were sure. like, oh, for real? Amazing. Please send it to us. I sent it to them. They were like, oh, we'll pay for the shipping. This, this, this. Wow. Sent the works. Yeah, mm. we had the show sold. They got excited. They needed more works. We had, in fact, and that was like basically how the world started getting out there. People started paying attention like, oh, who's this guy? Who's this guy? And from paying attention, um, I think it got... Um, Swiss beat eyes and Swiss beat like posted the work and you know tagged me in it and everything and then a lot of more galleries saw me and you know it just became like a ripple effect. So I did a couple of exhibitions with um, some galleries in US, some galleries in London, some galleries in France, and you know it just kept expanding. Well, like uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. the, the world is your stage. I mean, just at the end, fantastic, at fantastic. The end. Then, it just recently that I, I said, you know what, I need to take my works away from canvas mm. and start putting it in things, like yeah. things that people can own, things that people can see, things mm. that people can experience. Like, Interesting. It should not just be a work on canvas, it should be like an experience. Experience. Yeah, yeah. so I started working with uh, Volkswagen to like wrap their van with my logistics. Interesting. Then I did, um, I did some collaborations with Ruby's Cube. Uh, wow. A, a big building that we, we had um, that was in Oxford Street oh. and you know many more collaborations that just that's, that. that's 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 <laughs> really amazing I mean I think it's 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 every artist's dream or hope to be seen yeah, uh, yeah. and I think you uh, the the eyes has a I mean to me now has a different yeah. meaning yeah. in your work <laughs> yeah. to because true you can see through the eyes yes and for me, you can actually see things in the yeah, eye, the eyes, in through yes. the eyes of other people. Yes, yes. Uh, there's so there's so much that is. How somebody made a reference to my works? He said something. He said, "If you go to, if you enter the bus, yes. right, everybody feels like they're just taking spaces, but nobody feels alive at the moment. Like hmm. you, all, all you're just doing inside the bus is trying to find a space to sit, sit right? and get to your destination yes, and, and get come your alive. Exactly. But the moment you catch a glance at somebody and you he person looks you at you connect connects it's like that person just becomes alive mm. at that moment mm. so it's like you you give the person the person has life the person mm. so the mm. eyes is like a very core it's a portal yes, it's to portal. the soul yes exactly mm. it's, a, it's a very big portal mm. it is more of our being mm. and it, 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 it might it might sound very uh, uh weird and you know very you know Oh, he's trying to make make up some things, mm. but when you actually think about it, it's it's very like actually. to stare at you in your eyes. It can be very you know emotive. Yes, yeah. yeah. I want to like turn your eyes and look at you. Yeah, so absolutely, the high is uh, it's, yeah. it's it's a magnificent, yeah. Yeah. magnificent yeah. Uh, it's a portal powerful. to the soul. Yeah, pa very powerful. Yeah. And even in photography, when you think about it, sometimes they'll tell you that the eyes should be the focus if you're taking a portrait of someone yeah. the eyes should be the sharpest place yeah sharpest yes, except yes. you're trying to dig because imagine a face without it without, without the, the eyes <laughs> I mean, just, anyways um I, I feel like you've answered this question but yeah. i'm still going to ask yeah. why your fascination with the human body now because yeah. the eyes is not just the only thing yeah that's yeah. the element of the human body yeah. that you uh you've um adopted yeah. to explore yeah um, why the fascination? Yeah, so uh, for me, I, 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 still, I learned art through portraiture. Mm. Right? And no matter how much I want to push myself to make abstract work, which I have tried, mm. uh, there it still keeps reoccurring. Yes, there yeah. is just this love for portraiture mm. and you know, painting people that mm. I know. That mm. people, I, I, I see the excitement when my friends see their, their, their portraits in like US and they are like, ah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somebody just bought me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it's like, it comes with a whole lot of excitement. It comes mm. with a whole lot of questions. Mm. It's, like, and it's like you are, you are storing history. Mm. Like nobody else can look like John 
in the canvas. Mm. Mm. Nobody else can have the story of John in the canvas. Absolutely. But when you paint John Even in the, the canvas, experiences. the experiences, yeah. Mm. When you paint John in the canvas, there's only one John in that canvas. And in years to come, 500, 10, 1 million years to come, mm. you look back on that canvas and you remember and that's John. The theology. Yeah. You understand? So Absolutely. for me, it's like, as an ethnographer, it's like I'm trying to like story. Explain this ethno, ethno <laughs> ethnography. Ethnography. Tell us the name. Yeah, of it's ethnography. like it's like somebody who documents, somebody mm. who who mm. you know discovers and Absolutely. uncovers and documents and you know. Fantastic. Yeah, so I sort of look at this world as a as as if I'm an astrologer, you know, mm. and trying to like learn and understand. And a philosopher. And, and a philosopher, yeah, and like document these things and mm. this times of our lives, Absolutely. whether it's answers, protests, or whether it's our social connection, mm. or whether it's our, um, it's, it's the police brutality. Mm. It's sort of a way for me that I document these things. Mm. And you can only do that with human beings. Absolutely. Yeah, but my extra context that I now add, where I now make the eyes very glaring, yeah. is now, so now, you know, see it eye to eye with the person who has, mm. you know, experienced, experienced it. Yeah, yeah. Understand? see it through their see eyes. See through their eyes. Mm. Do you understand? I can cut out the person's whole shape of body mm. and put the eyes there mm. so that forget the whole body. body. Do you understand? They don't tell you the story. Mm. Like, we're bling bling. You cannot really understand mm. my own story. But when mm. you see just the eyes, then mm. you clear out all the noise mm. and you just pay attention. Focus on to the person. Mm. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to ask what inspires yeah. you? Ah. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I know. I know you've been inspired by so many different things yes, at so many different times. So many, like, yes, but I, just give us. Yes, me. <laughs> just, just give us a. I mean, and that thing. Yeah. That's one thing about true artists. Yeah. Um, I can wake up today and see the way the sun eats. The yes, and, and it inspires a me, yeah. whole different chain of thoughts yeah. and a whole different array of works. Yeah. But I mean. We understand that. Yeah. But Ken, what inspires Ken? Uh, my environment to start with. Mm. I like walking out. Walking out, like, every time I'm at home, every day, I walk with my dog. Mm. I try to, like, see what's going on, see the construction that is going on, see mm. people walking around, mm. ask myself, what's this person walking for? Like, mm. Why is this person moving on the road? Mm. Like, yeah, mm. I do that a lot. Um, mm. So my environment inspires me. When I'm in London, I have a different perspective. Mm. When I'm in US, I have a different perspective. And mm. that's how it just keeps... When you're in Bariga. Well, I have a different, different perspective. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it keeps going. And yeah. that's why I love traveling. Because mm. it's like, for every travel you have, you There's get a different, different kind of perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So that inspires me. Another thing that yeah. inspires me is music. I love music. Yeah. In fact, I love music so much that I started up a music label. Mm. Yeah, with my friends. Wow. Even though it's so difficult to manage artists, but yeah, it's, <laughs> but, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. but very I started off in, in music label because, and in my studio those days. So my the artists I manage, they mm. used to be in my studio, and mm. they sort of make the music while I'm painting. And mm. so it's they very it's a unique yeah, connection. Yeah, it's a unique connection. It's very inspiring. I, I think I can relate to every yeah. single thing you've yeah. said, and. And the, the whole idea is also, from what you said, yeah. I could pick up where this conversation came, started yeah. from. Yeah. And the conversation was like, oh, I'm doing a series of studio visits. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like that's actually inspiration yeah. in yeah. itself. Because yeah. sometimes we look at other people's uh, arts and mm. we get inspired. Yeah. I go into other people's space yeah. and it and inspires guess, uh, me. Yeah. So I think I can relate yeah. a lot to uh what's what what you have said yeah. what what you have said and um it's 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 fabulous yeah i, I love i love studio visa i love seeing i love seeing people's works i love seeing people's um what people are trying to do i like knowing projects because i feel like it's, it's a whole inspiration it's like mm. it's like you either know whether you either know it's either adding something to you mm. or or you know, perfecting something that you've started. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it definitely helps. Knowledge, mm. knowledge can never go wrong. You and know it. Once you know it, you know it. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's in you. It's yeah. not something that you buy. Yes, you can exactly. lose. Yeah. Uh, it's once you get it, it's, yeah. it's forever. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about your recent residency with the bomb factory yeah. art. Yeah, it's, it was, uh, it was really cool. It was really, really cool. I had like a very big studio, man. Like, at Chelsea, 
mm. like close to the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> it was wow. amazing, bro. Wow. Which, oh my God, the street was big. Mm. I felt like at, at the moment, I felt like, you know, the Demian Harris still like calls, like people who create like the next level imaginary, like, and that's why I created the boxes because mm. in that kind of studio. Do you you start skill. Like, you you start skill. skill, man, you expand. <laughs> I did like almost 100 boxes of 40 by 40 wow. um, um, centimeter wow. the inches. Inches. No, inches of, I don't know, but it's like Yeah, big. inches, yes. Inches, yeah. Wow. And when you when I stacked them together, it made like a whole like warehouse. Wow. And Imagine sense, doing that in Nigeria. Are you where you want to put the box? <laughs> <laughs> where you want to put the box? Wow. Even wow. I, I started creating some boxes here in Nigeria, but I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, storage. Oh, yeah, storage is a big is Display. a big issue. This plays a big issue. Logistics of moving it around. Yeah, man. Yeah, but I'm, I'm actually displaying some of the boxes mm. that Wet Africa Gallery in my, wow. my next show this, this month, actually. Fantastic. That's in Abuja. Yeah, in Abuja. Fantastic, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, so the, the Bomb Factory Foundation, what they told me it was, a, it was a beautiful experience, actually, mm. because she said, create anything you want to create. Hmm. Like anything you want to create, no matter what it is, right? and you have a place to create, and you have a, a studio to create it, and you have a space to show it. And I sat down, and I'm like, this is the first time somebody is giving me like a blank book to create whatever. Ooh. Like, it does not need to be sellable. It does not need to be commercial. Just create. Just create. Wow. So I was sitting there in my house, in my, in my apartment in London, and I, I, I was thinking of what to do. And I saw... I used to buy materials, you know, online, mm. you know, Amazon and stuff. So they used to come in cardboard boxes. Mm. Whereas in Nigeria, we buy things, you go come in nylon. They will give you, they will give, they will give you, they will give you the pencil like this, uh, uh, you know, that is why I you. <laughs> But in Yaki, they always come in cardboard boxes. boxes. So I had like a lot of boxes in my, mm. in my apartment. Mm. And I, the, the first thing that hit me was some of them were squeezed, some of them were bent, some of them were mm. dirty. Mm. And the first thing that hit me was, Sticks. how do I create an art from these boxes? So that, mm. number one, it's recyclable. I know it's recyclable. Do you understand? Mm. Like, I don't, I don't need to throw it away. Mm. And then I can bring value to something that people really do not care about. Care about because for you to bend it and mess it up, that means it, you don't there's really no, care there's about no value it. Yeah. in it. So at first, I, I took the boxes, cut it up, you know, created a painting and shipped it properly. Mm. Then I went to the gallery, to the mm. to the gallery and I showed her the box, the work. And she was like, oh, what to see, what, what was the idea of it? And I was like, oh, I told her that, you know, these boxes sort of migrated from wherever I bought it from mm. to this place. Mm. So the boxes is like me. I, mm. I also migrated from Lagos mm. to this place. Mm. Now the boxes, when they migrate, they carry an item of value. Mm. So the box might not be the main thing, I but that value. item of value. value is the main thing. Yeah. yeah, I carried my talent all the way from Lagos. Which is the item London, of value. Which is my item of value. Now, when you get the box to that destination, you pick out the item and you put the item and it becomes a part of that space, mm. right? So as an artist, when you bring your talent to London and you release that talent, it becomes part of that space. Mm. So it can either, you know, create this cultural hybridization. Mm. It can change people's mentality mm. or it can it even can change educate, your own. It yeah. can educate people, yeah. Mm. So I saw the box as a parcel, a way, a, as, as a, a conveyor, as, 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 yes, as a vessel, yeah. Mm. And, you know, as a migrant. Mm. Right? And I thought, you know what, I'd like to create, use the box, Valid, the cardboard yeah. box to mm. create like images of migrants or people that I met on mm. the way because I was snapping pictures in, mm. in the airport. Wow. I even put a recorder, I recorded the whole journey wow. and I used it for the exhibition. Wow. Yeah, so Sean she to saw it, she was like, oh, so why can't you just create it on the box itself instead of cutting it out and shipping it? Mm. And then I sort of I was like, oh man, that's a very beautiful idea. idea. So I went back and I looked at the boxes and I was like, Instead of cutting it, I mm. just take the boxes, create the faces, yeah. and stack them together, yeah. and they become the migrant. Yeah. And they have, it has this volume, it, you know, yes. the volume, it has yeah. this context, yeah. everything in context. context. Yeah. Mm. So I just, you know, I started up the, the work and I mm. tried to, you know, catch up with the exhibition dates. I mean, I've, I've gotten yeah. so yeah. many things from even yeah. just your experience, yeah. the value of a, I mean, the, the importance of, of, um, enabling environment yes yes, yes, uh, it's, yes i mean i think it's it's and yes. also the fact that even as humans 
we're actually meant to be creators. Yeah, yeah. And when you look at the story of creation, according mm. to the Bible in yeah. itself, it was just like, let us make this. Let yeah. us make yeah. this. Yeah. Let's, and it just brings me to the fact that we are actually godlike. Yes. In our essence. Yes. Yeah. Whereas we're supposed to create. Yes, yeah, create. Even yeah. from the talents, from everything, yeah. single thing yeah. around us. And that's what is most fascinating. Yeah about you as a creative person, yeah. about, you as, as, about every single person, because, yeah. you know, we, we take up something really mundane yeah. and we turn into something. something For instance, intense. this round table was, yeah. was standing and yeah. we're leaning on, yeah. was cut out of this round, cut out in the back. Oh, that is mad. Yeah. I mean, so that is so, so it's just the value of turning things that would have otherwise gone to yeah. waste yeah. into things into of, of yeah. value. And yeah. I think this is really, really important. It's op- I mean, there's so many yeah. different <laughs> contexts that has come to yeah. my head. Yeah. So finally, finally, what would you... I have, I have one final question, but yeah. I, w- I have a follow-up question yeah. also. Um, you mentioned a lot of things, yeah. like... You were traveling, you put a recorder. Yeah. yeah. You were traveling, you knew you had to take pictures yeah. in order to, what is, how does this add to your process or what is your creative process? Yeah, um, me being here is a creative process. Mm. Uh, me, me being with Halima is a creative process. Like the kind of relationships I have is a creative process. The kind of, because I remember this fella, I remember fella said something, uh, mm. he said, if music is a, if art is a way of life, mm. then you know he cannot be singing romance when his people are dying. Mm. Do you understand? That's why he can He has to be an activist because it's mm. a which way of life. Mm. Do you understand? And when I see myself, I see the people I hang out with, the, my whole community mm. as my way of life. Mm. Do you understand? Because they sort of influence me on what is right and what is wrong. They mm. influence me on what I should where I should be or mm. you know the kind of knowledge I have. Mm. So I'm always very, you know, active in taking pictures and you mm. know v- taking videos. There's one there's one work I did, you like it. It's called Gangsters Paradise. Mm. So I was in the bus, I was in the car and I was looking at a bus and at the bus there was this guy at the back of the bus and he was just there at the back of the bus. And I was looking at this guy and I was telling at this guy and I was like this does not sound, this does not feel new to mm. me anymore. Like, this is normal. So I took a video of it and I put it on my, on my WhatsApp status. And some of my friends from um, UK, from US, we are like, oh, is this guy on drugs? And I'm like, that guy is definitely not on drugs. That is like, that is normal. That mm. is like, yeah, that's his the guy is chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? It, and, you know, I started, cre- I started to create a work concerning that, like mm. the, the, the social life of Lagosians. Right? Mm. People might think that they're mad, but it's not, it's not madness. It's, it's, we, are in a, we are in a gangster's paradise. Trust it's me, a paradise, people right? are mad with <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, it's, it's in, at the end, you figure that it's, it's almost the way of life. It's, it's, but you know, when you think about it, too, the insanity is relative. Yeah, very relative, very relative. When you think of all the great artists and creatives in the world, you realize that, yeah, it's quite... They, they, they were in, to certain people insane, mm. do you yeah. understand? And to yeah. certain people, they are geniuses. Geniuses, yeah. yeah. So, because it's the way of life for me, I decided, you know, why that, not document you know, it? Why not document why it? Not why not create works? Why not always, it? always see my spaces? Hmm. Like, I, I see um, you're always soaking up experiences. I oh, think, bro, I think experience is just like a sponge. Well. Always just soaking up everything. Ah, and is, yes. and I, 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 intentionally enjoy it like mm. not intentional i subconsciously i, I consciously i enjoy the experiences enjoy the i go back i go back and i think about it and i you know sometimes reminisce on certain mm. experiences that like i'm going to go back and reminisce on ah i was just with emmanuel and mm. we are talking mm. about life experiences mm. but these are my this is my process you mm. know my life my environment the things mm. i come across because i feel like if i can document my life mm. People can relate to it Jeez, to an extent, you can learn right? From it. I can learn from it. People can mm. learn from it. Mm. I can I can preach with it. Mm. People can you know understand. You it. can establish yeah. change. With I it. can establish change with it as well. So mm. I think I have so way. many other questions to ask you. Yeah. But I don't think we have, <laughs> think we have enough time. It's so yeah. sad. It's so sad. Um, yeah. What 
advice do you have for upcoming Nigerian artists? Uh, be like Kanye West. <laughs> be like Kanye West. Don't oh. like be <laughs> know it mm. and do it. Mm. Because one of the biggest issues with art is that you are always trying to look for galleries and people who can certify that you are a good artist. Mm. You don't need that certification. If you can mm. believe it, if you know you're a good artist, if you can believe in your ideas and your creative juices and your creative inspiration, then just go for it. Mm. Regardless of the scale of the work or how small it is or how big it is, I think the most, the most, the most important thing is for you to start creating Mm. And believe for you to you believe in what you create and for you to create something new. Newness mm. is what foils artists. Mm. If, if you create the idea that there's something new that nobody has done before, mm. is that foil. Even if they've done it before, but you know, you that's what foil. You can do it mm. better. You can do it in your own way and in your own creative way, sir. Wow. <laughs> I mean, speaking with you has been so profound. Like, I have tons and tons and tons of questions, <laughs> but we'll carry off off camera. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank so, you so, so much, much for, for, for joining so us. Thank it's been so, so amazing. It's been so insightful. I mean, this, I've learned so, so, so much. Uh, thank you again. Thank you once again for joining. Uh, like, subscribe. I mean, this is just, uh, it's just too much, I have too much inspiration already. Uh, but until next time, uh, stay inspired.